Hello everyone! So as you can tell by the title of the video, I'm doing something very exciting today. I am doing 2020 makeup versus 2023 makeup. So I've actually done this video before I did it in 2020. I did 2016 makeup versus 2020 makeup and literally like two minutes ago, like before I like came here to film this, I was thinking in my head, it has been three years since 2020, which absolutely is insane. Like that sounds crazy to me. I can't believe it's been three years. I feel like the past three years have flown by. I don't know if that's because COVID and everything's like been a blur. Like I just can't, like what, what is life? Like it's so weird. Anyways, I'm just going crazy in my own head. But also I was thinking, oh my God, in three years time, I'll be doing 2023 versus 2026 Makeup. And the sound of the year 2026 makes me feel really nauseous. I'm not <laughs> like, it scares me. I specifically remember in, I think, 2012, thinking, oh my God, in 10 years, it'll be 2022. Like I remember being at school and thinking that in my head, like, you know, when you remember those random thoughts, I specifically remember trying to imagine the 2020 years and it's just like, we're here. I don't know, so weird. I'm just like having a real hard time conceptualizing everything. I don't know if that's the right word, but literally like, life is crazy and life moves so fast and so do makeup trends makeup trends come and go all the time so i'm here to do a little bit of comparison between 2020 and 2023 which is wild but let's get into it okay so this side will be my 2020 and this side will be my 2023 <gasps> Okay, starting off in 2020, so for me personally, I just kind of had really gotten into priming, but in both years, I'm not gonna lie, so I'm just gonna put this all over my face. I have been using Illuminating Glow Drops. Now, I'm kind of pale, so this just adds a little bit of color, and I specifically remember using this Prepped Set Glow Spray for a primer, which is interesting, but I'm gonna spray this on this half of my face. Oh, that's really... Not it. Oof. Okay, I'm just gonna rub this in with my hand. Oh, I might have put a bit too much on, clearly. Oof. Okay, don't worry. I'm gonna fix this. But on the 2023 side of my face, I have been using the Touch of Water Cream. I've definitely been investing into more hydrating primers and hydrating things for my skin. I'm really trying to take care of my skin. But I'm using a foundation brush to blend this all in and as you can see this side is a lot more blended a little bit less harsh this is definitely more harsh which is what i used to go for there's not that much of a difference but i feel like the way in which you apply things makes a huge difference so as you guys may or may not know i feel like 2020 brows were crazy there was definitely the waxy pushed up laminated eyebrow trend which was absolutely huge all over tiktok and i feel like these days it's similar but not as crazy so i have the perfect product that you can do both with now this video is sponsored by benefit and throughout my whole youtube career and my whole makeup career <laughs> i've always used benefit on my brows so i'm so excited to be working with them and this is their new fluff up brow wax so this has 12 hour wear it is also waterproof which is absolutely amazing it has a flexible hold and the main thing that i am obsessed with that i struggle with so many brow products is that this is flake proof so you know when you do your eyebrows and throughout the day you get those little white flaky things this is flake proof so that is so amazing so important and i'm so excited because i love benefit so before i get started with my brows i just wanted to mention that the fluff up brow wax is now available at Sephora Australia and yeah as you're about to see you can use this in many different ways with many different brow styles so let's get into doing the 2020 versus 2023 eyebrows because I feel like out of everything this is what has changed the most in my opinion oh my god in 2020 as i said lamination brows were everything just straight up freaking i don't know it i tried it it didn't suit me but for the sake of today that's what we are going to do so this is also really cute packaging and as you can see the brush is a lot smaller which i really like it looks like it's a lot more like precise compared to other eyebrow products that i've used i'm just going to start pushing up my eyebrows as high as i can and it's interesting because the the product itself is a little bit white, but it's dry and clear, which is amazing. Okay, so as you can see, I literally did like two, three run-throughs of my brows and they're really sticking. They are stuck there, which is what I love because I feel like throughout the day, my eyebrows always like 
scoop around, but I've just tried to push them up as much as I can. Now I'm just going to just brush the edges so that they're not as sticky uppery. That's not even a word! Okay, so now that I've done my laminated brows, they're not too bad. I didn't want that full sticky up look because that's just a nightmare and my eyebrows aren't cut enough to do that. But I'm going to move on to this side and I feel like 2023 brows are just normal brows. Like they're a little bit laminated, but I feel like people are starting to use a lot less products on their brows. I also feel like thin eyebrows are really coming in. Go back to the 90s supermodel eyebrows, but I feel like that's really coming back in. And just the really sleek brush together look. I haven't seen too many crazy eyebrows this year so far. It's only been, what, a month? So we shall see. But this product is insane. Like, look how sleek. I would say the same for this, but we're over this. Well, I'm over this. <laughs> this product has just really brushed out both sides so well. There's no white flakes, and I can definitely feel that they feel very stuck. They feel in place. And yeah, so this is 2020 versus 2023 eyebrows. Let me know which one you guys prefer, but I am so obsessed with this product. It was able to do both super well, super easy, super quick. They're not crunchy and the formula is more waxy. So it's able to hold in place all day. And also I feel like I can be flexible with my eyebrows without my eyebrows stuffing up and moving everywhere. So I love that. So thank you so much to Benefit. Don't forget to check them out in my description box. All of the links are there. But yeah, super obsessed with this product and both of the brow looks that I was able to create. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to conceal under this brow. I'm not gonna do for this eyebrow because I feel like 2023 makeup already has started to become a lot more minimal. I feel like 2020 was more about soft glam, but really emphasizing your features. And 2023 has all been about natural beauty. I've seen so many video trends where people are like, how I used to look with my full face compared to me embracing my natural beauty, which is great. I love that, but also I am missing the fun makeup trends. I really feel like 2020 was when we started to see, not the downfall of makeup, but the downfall of glam makeup. All right, just for a base under this eye, I'm gonna put a little bit of concealer, not much. I'm really not gonna carve out the brow. If you guys remember, 2020 was all about the fox eye trend. Oh my God. I love that trend. I feel like it looked so good. It looked so sleek. It was so super my whole vibe, I don't know, but I really love that trend. So I'm gonna start off with taking some brown tones and I'm really just gonna focus on darkening my outer eye corner. Oh, I remember saying that freaking sentence like 300 million times back in 2020. Just focus on darkening the outer eye corner because that will really lift your eye. <laughs> so I'm just gradually getting darker and darker as I go out. All right, now this looks crazy, but I will clean it up. I'm now just going to grab like a light gold color I'm gonna kind of mix these two and pop that on my lid. I feel like shimmer was still definitely being used on the lids. And one thing about 2020 makeup is the inner eye pop of highlighter was insane. Like that was, that was out to play. But again, I'm really just gonna blend out the shimmer because it was intense, but it wasn't that intense, you know what I mean? Okay, so I feel like this year we are really seeing our blush being tied in everywhere, tied into our lips our eyes, our under eyes. So I'm actually taking a blush that I will later be using on my face and just starting to blend out. But we are not doing much of this, just a little bit, that's all. And I'm also gonna take a little bit of a brown color. And then again, going back with this palette and just adding the teeniest, tiny bit of darkness to my outer corner. Now for my lid on this side, I'm actually, again, doing something that I would do on my face routine. I'm taking the highlighter that I will be using later on. I'm just putting that on my eyelid, but again, less is more. And I'm just gonna go in again with the pink blush and blend that out. I'm gonna curl my lashes. Now for both years, I'm going to be using a brown eyeliner pencil. But for this eye, I'm going to make it a lot more dramatic and a lot more lifted. It's actually a good eyeliner. This eye I'm going to do not as dramatic, but still a cute in wing. Okay, you can kind of see the difference, but it's not that different. I will be doing a cat wing later on on this eye after I've done my face makeup. I just feel like doing it after face makeup looks a lot better. But I feel like cat wings have gone a little bit out. I haven't seen them as much as I used to see them. I used to see them on every Tom and Jerry. Is that the saying? I don't know. But the big difference here with the eyes is this little lash. I feel like 2020 was the year when outer wing lashes became 
huge. Everyone was rocking the half lash, the fox eye lash lift. And so I am just taking this little old lash and I'm gonna be sticking this on. But first I'm gonna be applying mascara to both lashes, but I'm not gonna be using any lashes on this side. It makes my makeup a lot easier these days, but I do love good lash. See, that looks great. I don't need false lashes. Like now I'm thinking about it, I have definitely seen like hint towards people turning to more natural looks. I feel like it's a good thing. I feel like people are really embracing themselves now is the moment of truth. Both eyes have mascara on and I will now be sticking on my trusty dusty half lash. When I place this, I'm only going to place it from the middle half of my eye out. And with the outer corner, I'm going to stick it, I don't know if you can see, but at the top of my wing. So it's not directly touching the base of my eye. It's more so stuck to my wing. And as this dries, I'm just going to lift, 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 lift. Look at that. Oh, which side do you prefer? Because I, I'm really missing this. This is just so cute and lifting and fox eye. And this is just, hey, let's move on to the face. With foundation, I don't feel like there's a whole lot of difference. I just feel like maybe in 2023, we're using a little bit less foundation, but I don't think much has changed. I think the main things that have changed is the concealer and all of that. I'm just gonna put on my foundation as usual, a little bit less on this side and 2020 side, I'm using this brush. I used to use very thick, very big, but it's great. I would still use this brush. The 2023 side, I'm going to be using this brush, same brand, but this one's a little bit more precise. I'm gonna get to do on both sides. All right, so I'm really just blending that in. I feel like throughout the years, moving on to different products and different techniques, you really forget how things used to be. Right now, like going back and trying the 2020 trends, I feel like it's very interesting because it makes me think like, was this better? You know what I mean? Like we've moved on from it, but did I enjoy this more? Did I look better? All right, maybe 2020 is all about that lift. So this is where the, uh, the three dot highlight really came into play. Put on the chin, a bit here, a little bit here. I'm gonna blend this out. The whole lifted look was huge. You could not escape it. This looks great. Whoa, I'm loving this. 2023. To be honest, I kind of do it the same. I feel like these days I just use actually a bit more concealer. That's me personally. You'll see when everything ties in together, but I feel like everyone's loving the bright pink under eye look. I'm gonna dare to go a little bit brighter on this side and just really focus on the under eye. 2020, I definitely was using cream contour. I'm just blending that out with my foundation brush. The whole goal of 2020 was to look snatched. So I feel like contouring was huge. This year, I really got into more cream bronzers and a more natural blended out look that's not too like, you get me? And just taking a little bit on the brush and focusing it on the cheekbone area and then just blending that everywhere else. Now, I'm not gonna be doing it on this side, but on this side, I will be using some liquid blush. The blush just keeps on blushing. Like I feel like there is never gonna be enough blush. I'm using a hot pink blush and just putting that directly above my contour. I'll get on the side of my nose. To set this side of my face, I am taking translucent powder. I'm not gonna be baking. I feel like that was really a 2016 thing. I feel like over the years, baking has just become less and less of a thing, but I am going heavy on the powder. And for this year, I am taking pink powder and I am taking it on a flat brush and patting that under my eyes and then just with the excess blending around my face. I don't know if you can tell, but this side compared to this side, I feel like this side looks a lot more velvety. It feels a lot more velvety than this side. To be honest, I think that's just from the powder. And I will be heavily contouring with this because remember the goal? Fox. Imagine like basing how you want to look off of a fox. Did I do that? Did I do that? Yeah, just really bronzing the sides, the jaw, everything. Today, I'm just gonna be taking ordinary bronzer because I feel like we don't go for that intense snatch look as much anymore. So I'm just not going as dark. I'm not going as precise. I'm just blending it out. All right, and of course, to contour the nasal cavity. Not much has changed for me. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like nose contour is always gonna be about the same goal. That's snatch. 
blushing. All right, so for blush on the 2020 side, I feel like it was more of a sunkiss, corally, natural toned blush back in the day. So I'm taking mainly these three colors and I'm just gonna blush, blush, blush and kind of emphasize it on the side of my nose. And then on this side, we are going for a hot pink blush. Yes, we are. This is really coming to trend this year and I'm really not gonna blend it under my under eye. I know a few people do that. Okay, and for the 2020 side, I am going to be doing some faux freckles. That became huge in 2020. I definitely have used the faux freckles every day and I really love it. I love the look. I think it adds that element of cuteness to that like foxy, sexy look. All right, and now I'm going to spray my face. I think, I can't remember what I was using in 2020. I don't think I have it. I was going to use this one that I used earlier, but it does not spray correctly and I don't want to ruin my makeup. So, more so on this side. Now for highlighter on this side. Glow was definitely in, so I have this broken palette, but it's the glowiest one that I have and I was using this in 2020. I'm going to be taking these two colors and just glowing my face up. Oh, this is such cute makeup and I'm hating my life. I need to start doing this again. And I'm putting it on and I'm putting a hectic huge amount and on this side I will be taking more of a less intense highlighter it's still very glowy it just gives more of that wet look and again I will be putting that on my brow bone and my inner eye corner but not as much as this side okay so for both sides I will be doing a little bit of under eye baking I feel like it has been popular in both years and more so going in on this side just to really brighten the under eye I've never really been a huge fan of under eye eyeliner I'm literally doing the same on both eyes I'm just putting a little bit of bronzer to Added some shadows and now on my 2020 side i will be doing a crazy inner eye cap wing okay so lucky last step on the 2020 side pretty much i'm just going to be doing the same for both sides just a little bit different i'm actually going to line all of my lips with the mac lip liner and strip down because i used that in 2020 i used that in 2023 now for the 2020 side i will be putting on a little bit of lipstick and it's a little bit glossy because gloss really started to come in in this year but it's a very light lipstick nothing dark very nude. Now for 2023, I'm taking this darker lip liner and lining the perimeters on my lips and then taking this pink lip liner and blending everything out on the whole lip. I'm then going to be taking a lighter color to add a bit of highlight and then I've seen some people do this. I'm getting my pink blush and putting that on my lip. And then for the lucky last step on 2023, I will be using my lip maximizer. But yeah, you guys, this is the 2020 versus 2023. Now that it's on my face, I can't really believe how much of a difference that is. Let me know which one you guys prefer. This is actually crazy. The brows, I definitely prefer these brows, but I really am obsessed with how the Benefit product has made them stay. Like I'm moving them around and they are not budging on either side, which I love, I'm obsessed. This is a tough one for me. I personally cannot decide, but this has been so fun to like compare the two years. It's like crazy to think how much has changed, like when you actually think about it. And yeah, let me know in the comments which year you prefer will help me decide because I love them both. But yeah, I love you guys so much. 